Hello everyone and welcome back. This is Mr. Cobalt and <clears throat> in this video I'm going to be going over uh, more about a little bit of, about nuclear fission, nuclear fusion, and a decay series and what that is. So first let's talk about nuclear fission. So nuclear fission is when an atom splits into more smaller atoms or pieces. So here's an example of that here. So you have a neutron. Here's the symbol of the neutron. So you have a neutron here bombarding a uranium-238 nucleus. And so that's going to make it unstable. And then the nucleus splits apart into two smaller uh, uh, parts here. So you end up with a barium nucleus and a uh, krypton nucleus and along with that <clears throat> you get three uh, neutrons that are produced plus some energy and so this is uh, the kind of reactions that occur in the nuclear reactors here as an example or nuclear bombs here as an example so <clears throat> this is nuclear fission uh, nuclear fusion is what powers the sun so nuclear fusion is the opposite of nuclear fission. So instead of splitting the atom apart and getting energy, you're putting nuclei together. You're putting two atoms together, and that releases uh, a lot more energy. Fusion is about 10,000 times more powerful uh, than that of fission. So you get 10,000 times more energy from fusion than you do fission. So here's an example of some some uh, reactions that are going on in the sun. So here you have two hydrogen atoms and then they will combine together to form a, uh, another a larger hydrogen atom. And you'll notice that the two hydrogens come together and you get another hydrogen plus you get a, what is called a, a positron. So this is positron emission. So this, <clears throat> this uh, particle you notice that it has E for electron, but it's got a positive one instead of negative one. So it's called a positron instead of a, an electron. But it's got the same mass as electron, same size as an electron, but it's just got a positive charge. So it's a like a beta particle, but it's positive. So this comes from the breaking of a proton into pieces. So to get the beta particle we saw earlier in another video, that the neutron in the nucleus breaks apart into a positive proton and then you get this negative electron which is your beta particle coming out of the nucleus so that would be your beta beta emission uh, but in this case um, you've got a proton that is breaking apart into a positron and then what's left behind is a neutron. So the neutron is left in the nucleus. And so here you're gaining a uh, number. So you got, a, you got your mass number is increased because you've gained a proton. And notice that you've got here two protons. So each hydrogen has a proton. When you combined it together, one of those protons broke apart into a neutron and a positron. So now you still have one proton left, which makes this new atom, the daughter isotope, is going to be hydrogen. But now it's got a larger mass number because the neutron that was left behind. And so you can kind of see the same thing going on here. So you've got your two hydrogens again. So this new hydrogen with a mass number of two can combine with another hydrogen. And then those numbers add together to give you three. And then these numbers on the bottom add together to give you two. So now you've got a helium atom. And so this is not quite a beta particle because the mass number is three, not four. But it's still a helium atom. It's just a different isotope from helium. And then here you could see that... Uh, two helium atoms can be uh, combined together. And then here you'll get uh, a, a beta particle, a helium with a, a mass number of four. 
and then you've got two hydrogen atoms along with that. So this is what fusion looks like. So two atoms coming together to form a larger atom, plus you might get some other products as well. All right, what about chain reactions? So here you have a chain reaction. I've talked about this in another video, but here it's a larger picture. And so here you have a beta, you have a, a neutron bombarding a uranium-235 nucleus. Uh, that makes it unstable. That nucleus basically ba breaks apart into what we saw before, barium and krypton. And then it's going to release three other neutrons. Those neutrons are going to fly out and bombard surrounding uranium-235 atoms and do the same thing. So this neutron bombards this uranium-235, the neighbor, and that makes it unstable and it breaks apart into two smaller parts. This one gets bombarded by this neutron and again becomes unstable and breaks up into two smaller parts as well. And then when that happens, you have three three neutrons are released here and then three more are released here. So you got six neutrons now being released. Those six neutrons can go out to neighboring uranium-235 atoms and make them unstable. And the reaction, it causes what is called a chain reaction. It just keeps going and going uh, until there's no more uh, uranium-235 to, to split apart. Or if there's no more what is called fissionable material left. So uh, a little review of our vocabulary. As we said, the, the atom that you're starting with is called the parent atom or parent isotope. And then what you end up with, whatever the decay product is, um, that element or that isotope that's called the daughter product or daughter isotope, and that's the new atom that is made. So the daughter products... <clears throat> And this um, can uh, be the product of one reaction. Um, if that is still unstable, it can decay into a new daughter product. So one daughter product can become the parent of another daughter product. And we call this the decay series. So the daughter product becomes a parent for a new reaction. So you can have a series of decays where the daughter of one parent is now going to decay into another isotope and it becomes the daughter it becomes the parent of that daughter isotope and then that daughter isotope if it's unstable <clears throat> excuse me it can then decay further and give rise to a smaller isotope and keep going until it reaches a stable isotope that won't decay so here's an example so we start with plutonium-234, and so that plutonium can undergo an alpha decay, so you release an alpha particle, and then what's left is your uranium-240 as the daughter product. Well, that daughter product, that uranium-230 can be unstable, and that can undergo another uh, uh, decay. So what would happen if that undergoes a different decay? So here, uh, now, if it undergoes a decay, that daughter product becomes now a parent atom, and it undergoes a decay. And then let's say the decay, uranium-240, now decays into NP-240, and so it undergoes a beta emission, because here we have a beta particle that's released in the process. So first you have a, a, uh, an alpha decay, where you release an alpha particle and you have uranium-240 left. Now that uranium-240 can be the parent atom and decay undergo a beta decay. And so that beta particle is released here and you'll notice that it increases in the number of protons. So you, uh, this U uranium becomes NP. And so now you have a new daughter isotope or product from the parent isotope. Now, this NP, if it's unstable, it can continue the process. So it can also undergo a decay. So then this NP can, 
become, instead of a daughter, it'll be a parent isotope again. So now this can undergo a decay. And so it can go from NP240 to AC232 and undergo an alpha decay twice. So you here's that, that two, this big two, that's the coefficient in front of your alpha particle. So it's releasing two alpha particles. And so your 240 becomes 238 and your 93 becomes 89. And so now you have this daughter, uh, daughter product. But again, that could, if this is, if this is a, a stable isotope, then it would stop there. And then, uh, or if it's not stable, it would just keep going until, until you reach stable. So once you get here, you can find what is called the neutron to proton ratio. And so you look for, like count up the number of neutrons. Remember the number of neutrons is the mass number, that top number minus the bottom number, <clears throat> excuse me, which is your atomic number. And that's the number of protons. So you subtract the protons from the number on top and you get 143. So 143 uh, for the number of neutrons, 89 for the number of protons. So if you were to divide, if you were to find that ratio of neutrons to protons, you divide the number of neutrons by the number of protons and you get 1.6. And so <clears throat> that 1.6 indicates that it's uh, probably at this point a relatively stable compared to what it was before. Okay, well, I hope this was helpful. If you uh, enjoyed this video, if it was uh, very helpful for you to understand uh, fission and fusion and decay series, uh, please like my videos. Uh, hit that like button down below. Also, uh, please <clears throat> subscribe to my channel hit that notification bell up on top so you can be notified by videos I put out. Um, put a comment down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. And if you have any comments or questions, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.